The recording has started. Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Today we're going to talk about some tweaks I made in my game to hopefully help uh, other owners uh, tweak their games to have them play a little bit better. Uh, first, we're going to talk about what um, um, affects all models. So uh, for people that have played this game at various locations or different um, different versions of the game, it seems pretty consistent that the orbit uh, feeds can be pretty sloppy, hitting the tops of the slings or firing the slings and going straight to the outlanes, stuff like that. Um, so I got some tips on how to help that as well as um, the saucer kick out going around the burn it back loop. Uh, doesn't seem to go around the burn it back loop on most games that I've seen. So um, I was tweaking mine last night and, and kind of figured out I think are a pretty good way to adjust that at home if you guys need help with that. So we're going to cover that first. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. So saucer burn it back loop. The saucer is right here on the left. So I got my camera right on it. It's right here. You can see there's a metal guide right above the saucer that the ball ricochets off of and goes to the right side of the game. Now if you have it dialed in, it should go around the burn it back loop. See how it comes all the way around the game? Now a sloppy shot, it might go up the burn it back loop and come back down. But if you dial it in, it should go all the way around. Now I have the stock um, saucer power on it, so keep that default. Um, I guess when you get this dialed in, you can play with that strength to see if you can get it to really zip around there. I haven't done that because um, I didn't want to like screw things up. But feel free if you get comfortable with adjusting how it's firing and you can see how, how it's doing. Feel free to up that that power in the settings so maybe you can get it to really fire around there. But again, it should when it goes in the saucer, it should fire around. And if you can get your game to do that, that really helps with a lot of things. Um, when you're in multi-ball, it'll give you like a two for one in your jackpots. Like you'll get a jackpot from the saucer and then the saucer will fire it around. And you can use the saucer as a way to, oh, I need that shot on the burn it back and I'm not really confident in hitting it with my flipper. Boom, hit it in the saucer. It'll do it for you. Um, it does need that right drop target to be down. So you want to hit down that right drop target first and then fire it around. Once in a blue moon, it will still sneak around even if the drop target's up, but I rarely ever see that. So it's going to hit down that right drop target first, and then you should be able to fire it around. Um, so what I did to adjust that. Take yourself a pair of needle nose pliers, just like this, and you're just going to grab that, that, metal, that metal hood right above the, the saucer, and if you want the ball to go more towards the drops, you just kind of want to tweak it and bend it just slightly to the left, like further up the play field. And if you want it to go more towards the ball guide, which uh, most games I've seen, it hits that post next to the drops almost every time. So if you grab that, that guide, that hood above the, the saucer and kind of pull it more towards the right flipper or the bottom of the game, that will help the ball fire around that loop instead of straight into that post. So um, when I was putting in my UV kit, it kind of got out of adjustment. And then when I was messing with it, um, I pulled it down towards the right flipper, but then I kind of pulled it too much. If you pull it too much, it will hit that guide up in the burn it back loop, but won't really kind of make the full orbit. It'll kind of just go up there and come back down. So if that's happening, just bring it back just a hair to the left, and you and it should g get it right in a perfect spot to uh, to fire it around that loop every time, or most every time. So that's the burn it back adjustments I've done. Um, next are the or orbit guides. So what I've seen on a lot of games is when you hit the mystery shot and it comes out of that post the ball does not feed the flipper. It'll hit the top of the sling or hit just below the top of the sling and fire the sling, the ball goes crazy. But this is the way the ball should feed. It should come out of the, the post lock and feed to the flipper every time. 
Now, once in a blue moon, you'll get a sloppy feed, and it, and it might not do exactly that. But for the most part, it should really just hit that flipper every time. So you can try the dead bounce. You can do live catch. you got all kinds of options there, and you're not frustrated by this immediate out of control from a made shot. <clears throat> so there's various options there. Um, the, but the first thing I would do is make sure that when you hit the ball into your, your post up there, that the ball has enough time to get past the post before the post comes back up. I've seen on a lot of games where the ball hasn't moved out of the way of the post yet, the post comes up, smashes the ball into the ball guide, and then throws it out of control and it can go haywire. What's causing that is, well, at least on my game, is the game wasn't quite level. It was leaning a little bit too much to the right. If you level the game more perfectly or maybe even give it a slight left lean, that ball will have more time to get away from the post so when it comes up it doesn't touch the ball and it'll feed smooth just like this. Like you shouldn't see the ball like kind of get pushed out of there. It should just fall out of there. So you'll notice a pretty obvious issue if your ball is just getting like slammed up against the wall by the post. The post is causing that so have the game, make sure the game's level or maybe even lean it just a hair to the left by dropping down the, the left side of your game. Um, so do that first and see how your feeds are after that. If your feeds are great after that, awesome. If they're still not quite right, uh, the next thing I would do is, is when you're putting in your UV kit, or if you don't have a UV kit, um, take the, the front of the left ramp off. It's pretty easy. There's only four screws in post. Take them out. You can just lay it down. And then take the plastic off that's right above this, this lane guide here. So it's just right here. And there's a, a screw right at the front of it. And there's actually a few screws in that lane guide. You can loosen those and you can adjust that guide back and forth so you can dial in where the ball feeds to. Now, if you do it too much towards the middle of the game, it's going to send the ball down the middle. If you do it too much to the left, it's probably going to hit that target and send it to the right, things like that. So just kind of find that sweet spot. And to test it, I would just keep throwing it up that, um, that mystery shot and, and see that consistent kick out. Then, the right orbit. So the right orbit, when it feeds the pops, on a lot of games, it won't feed smooth to the right flipper. It will it'll come out of there and fly all over the place. But again, it should feed right to the flipper. Can't really do a dead bounce from this side, at least on my game. Uh, but that's the variation you'll see, and I'll get to that. But most shots up there, if it feeds smooth, you should be able to get the right flipper on it and should never touch the sling, okay? And what's actually happening is, and you need to make sure it's doing this on your game, you need to make sure the lane guide is feeding... You need to make sure the... the uh, lane guide is feeding the shooter lane gate. It, the ball's going to graze that, bounce off, and feed the flipper. So when you're adjusting it, make sure you can kind of... Make sure you can see the ball kind of graze and, and wiggle that that one-way gate because that, that'll kind of push the ball off the wall and get it to your flipper. Now, if the feed's sloppy out of there, like you saw on one of my previous tries up there, it won't hit that gate. It'll miss it, but then it should hit the post right here that has a rubber on it. Um, I put a, a little bit larger rubber below the stock one. It's a little bit wider to help catch that ball. So if it misses the gate, it'll hit that rubber and it should feed the left flipper. So if you get yours perfectly dialed in, no matter how the feed comes out, it should lead to a controlled or semi-controlled shot. <clears throat> no more hitting the sling, whatever. Um, so yeah, um, so those are the orbits. That's the, the burn it back loop. Yeah, no problem. Always happy to help. Unfortunately, this is one of those games that is very, very finicky to set up. But I think once you do some physical adjustments and make sure the game's level, things like that, um, it's really not that bad. Like, especially if you have a pro. You should get a pro screaming real good. Um, we're not going to talk about the Demogorgon because it seems like most of the new games that come out, the Demogorgon is pretty consistent. They have a... Um, I think they, the initial run of games, which mine is, had a different um, had a the ramps weren't riveted correctly um, from what Brian Eddy was telling me. So 
they didn't catch it in the first few hundred games that went out. So I think the the later ones are much more consistent. I haven't played many of them, but um, the shots should be makeable for sure. Um, so we're not going to talk about that, but those are the, the three major things that I think, no matter what type of Stranger Things you have, if you can do those three to your games, it's going to improve the gameplay experience immensely. So if you do those three, they're pretty simple. Anybody can do them. Like I said, most you're going to have to do is remove a few screws, loosen some screws, and move some guides in and out. Not that big a deal. Um, so those are the three there. Now I'll talk about what I did to my telekinesis lock to improve the performance of that. So let's get this up here. So this is the one that's been giving me fits more than anything. Um, so we'll see if I can't. I mean, it's... Okay, that should work pretty well. All right, so first thing you'll need is to find the PDF from Stern showing the um, the specs that the telekinesis lock and the magnet mech and the back ramp need to be in to have it at its optimal performance. I would say if your telekinesis lock is working horribly, not working pretty much at all, then you need to follow those step by step and make sure your game is set up exactly like that. When I did that, it made it way better. It was super smooth. I even had to reduce the flipper power a little bit because the balls were too smooth up to the magnet and they would pass over the magnet. They were going so fast up there. So just make sure you're following that guide and doing it exactly how they say. Do every step, watch them closely, and, and measure everything. What I found is a good measurement tool for doing all these adjustments is just a tiny little tape measure. You can get it on Amazon for like a buck or two bucks, whatever. Um, and when you're making adjustments, you'll see in the Stern Guide, it goes through all that. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how to adjust it because that Stern Guide does a much better job than me. But when you're measuring, you manually activate the diverter from the plunger behind the backboard and hold it there. And then just take your little tiny tape measure and you, and you can make the, the appropriate uh, measurements from the diverter to the backboard and there's a few other uh, measurements you have to make uh, the diverter to the ramp floor things like that it's really easy to make those measurements and be really precise about it because it's 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 very finicky to set up and once you have it set up those adjustments won't change I've put hundreds of plays on it since I made those stern adjustments and they haven't come out of adjustment now I have other issues with it that cause inconsistencies but as far as getting the, the the mech into those specs that Stern gave me they've all stayed since I made those initial adjustments so do that first that should improve it greatly the next step is to um, that doesn't really get mentioned in the Stern stuff is to make sure it kinda touches on it in the Stern guide there's a there's just one screw on the other side of the backboard that's attached to a plate that kind of holds the ramp back on the game and if you loosen that screw up a little bit it kind of lets the ramp out a little bit and you want that ramp sitting out or closest to the player as much as you can that'll really center the diverter arm in the cutout of the ramp now what I noticed with mine last night was was my there's a let's see if we can show it on here so there's a plate that runs underneath the So you can kind of see it down here. I'll try and get my hands on it without blocking it. So right underneath the ramp, there's a a plate down here that kind of has a pivot bolt to it. It's a black like Allen wrench bolt that sits on top of a, of a rubber grommet that allows the mech to slide back and forth. Mine was all gummed up from that rubber grommet. The, the rubber had been coming off of it and was dirtying up that, that pivot point and making it really sluggish. Um, so I was experiencing issues where it would work fine at the start of a session and then once I played it longer it would um, stop performing as well. And I couldn't figure it out um, I still don't know if I figured it out, but last night I did notice that it was gummed up pretty good. So I got at it with alcohol really good, make sure it's clean and smooth. And then I use this. It's called Laco Zoom Spout Oiler. 
So this is what I use to juice spinners. You put them on the the you put it put just tiny little dabs on the arms of the spinner, and it'll juice your spinners. It'll spin for days, and you only have to apply it once. It's awesome. I've tried tons of other lubes, and you have to reapply them after a certain amount of plays. And with this, it lasts longer than anything else I've tried. Um, so what I did was after I cleaned it nice and good with alcohol, I just put a couple c tiny little drops in the groove that the um, the the pivot point moves back there and just kind of worked it in and out until it was just buttery smooth then i played it for two hours last night and um it just it, it performed better than i've uh, been able to have it perform in a long time now will i have to reapply this every so often keep cleaning that every 500 plays to make sure it's nice and smooth maybe i don't know that's still uh, yet to be seen and, and we'll see on stream today if it if it stays consistent the whole time but I definitely had the best performance out of that lock for a pretty long session of about two hours last night that I haven't seen before. So definite improvement. Just another idea out there for everybody tweaking that lock. So, um, hey, Kaz, what's up, man? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I have on tweaking the game. Like I said, the Demogorgon should be improved on later models. If you have one of the earlier ones, make sure you're getting with Stern because that shot shouldn't be impossible. It should be really early on the right flipper. It should be three-quarters of the way down the left flipper. If you can't make that, you know, two, three times out of five or five, six times out of ten, then – or or if you just can tell every time you're dead on, it's way too high – um, something's wrong with your ramp, and you should contact Stern, and uh, they'll get your serial number, and they'll be able to uh, help you out. They're still working on getting people those updated ramp kits, but, um, yeah, especially if you have uh, one of the earlier games, or even if you have one of the later games, make sure you get with Stern support to help you try and get your Demogorgon to uh, perform more consistently. So, anyway, that's all I got. I will go stop the recording, and then we'll start playing. <coughs> All right.